You're not going blonde, right? Yeah. No? <laughs> I think you could pay him. Yeah. Talk a little bit about how different Providence is from Lehigh Valley and what they bring. Well, they're a bigger, heavier team. Um, you know, they got some big defense, much like Lehigh does, but their transition game is probably not as, 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 as deep as uh, Lehigh in terms of uh, getting the puck into their forwards. Hands and forwards don't cheat as much. Um, you know, Lehigh, you know, they'd blow the zone before they even had a, a chance to maybe get the puck. They take chances that potentially the puck was going to get out and then they could, you know, get into offense uh, where Providence plays more of a structured game where I consider they'd have. Uh, five men in the zone, uh, in each all three zones, maybe compared to to Providence. But you know, goaltending is excellent as well. I mean, McIntyre had the best numbers all season long, so uh, he will be a challenge. And um, you know, we're going to have to get inside on their bigger D, which we struggle with at times against Lehigh uh, in terms of generating offense. Just getting to the front of the net. You know, we're, we're not an overly big team, or I would consider it on a smaller side up front. Uh, we might be a tad bigger than last year, but not too, not much more. Uh, so that's going to be a challenge for us for sure. Going up against McIntyre, how important is it to get to him early in this series? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, the, the good news is the last couple of times we've played him, we've been able to get to him. Um, you know, I think our, we, we've been able to generate some offense and doing some some certain things that we've talked to the team about. And uh, we'll start our preparation in front of the team uh, tomorrow in terms of how what we need to do from an offensive perspective uh, to get to McIntyre. You know, the, the, our, our our offensive zone con concepts. I don't think it really matters which goalie we have. You know, we're facing. I think they'll work, um, but we are going to have to fight to get to the front of the net in, in terms of uh, fighting for those second, op you know, second chance opportunities. Seems like there was a purposeful up tempo this to the practice this morning. It, it, you, were you conscious, like we got to get back in the flow here? Well, I think anytime you give the guys two days off this time of year, they come back with a lot of energy and rested. So you know, most times this year when we came back from a two-day break, uh, you kind of felt a little bit of energy. Uh, you know, on the ice. So, and I also think anytime you get you know, the first round is so difficult, even though it's a best of five. Uh, when you get down to that final eight, you know, players, you know, they kind of see that now all of a sudden you're in the second round. So, uh, the enthusiasm is maybe cranked up a little bit more as well. And then you get the guys rested, and then uh, you're usually in for a pretty good practice, which I see. I thought we seen today. These are two of the best road teams down the stretch here. How do you see that playing out in this series? Well, I'm hoping our road success continues. You know, uh, back in January, uh, you look at our road record. Um, you know, we shoot it for we. Our goals were to try to get to 20 every year. Uh, my my thoughts were if you get 25 home wins and 20 road wins, you're going to solidify home ice in the playoffs. So we didn't get there this year. Um, so there was a little bit of a concern uh, earlier in the year, but down the stretch when we needed big wins and big performances on the road, we got it. Um, and obviously in the playoffs as well, um, because I'm sure a lot of people were dealt with that we could pull off three straight in in Allentown to, to win this series. So um, you know their building is tough too. They 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 have a you know, their floor check is tremendous at home, and they come pretty hard, and uh, they get nice, you know, pretty pretty enthusiastic crowds as well. So um, you know, we'll uh, hopefully take care of business here at home first. But uh, you know, I'm hoping that road uh, record will continue. And they've got some pretty good confidence on the road too. They won the last two games up in Wilkesbury, right? So yeah, and they you know they they blew game two. You know, uh, anytime you have the goalie out, you know, you, you really want to get that game done. And you know, Wilkesbury came back and we were able to you know win that game in overtime. So next thing you know, you're going on the road for three. You're thinking it's a, a huge task. So uh, you got to give them some credit as well. And they were tough in our building. You know, uh, all three games they beat us the first time four one and didn't didn't give us a, we weren't tough to generate offense. Uh, and even though we were able to win game two and three, uh, you know, the great opportunities were at a premium. Troy, as the uh, playoffs have gone on, you haven't been afraid to tweak your lineup and even sit some prominent guys if you felt it would help the team. Going into this series, is, is the lineup kind of still evolving? Are you looking to get some guys maybe back in the lineup or are you just going to wait and see how the next couple days play? Well, I think it's, it's evolving as from game to game, you know, when you put lines together and you put a lineup together, it's about balance, right? So you start looking at your, your well, we don't have a lot of center right depth as it is. So Walker's been playing some center and he's a natural winger. So right off the hop, that puts you behind the eight ball because you don't have four natural centers. Um, so we tried that when we got Stevenson back and left Gusterson in, and then we felt that he was a little bit behind the pace. So next thing you know, what's your alternative? Well, you got to put Walker in that's at middle. And then up front, you know, I think you have, uh, on the wings, you have to have a balance between skill. Uh, and you also have to have a balance between guys that can penalty kill and guys that can play in the power play. You cannot put a lineup full of power play guys because you're going to kill some penalties. And you got Ryan Bork and Mitchell on the wings that are our best two penalty killers on the wings. 
Uh, you've got Chris Bork, you know, you know, he's not coming out, you know. Um, and you've got Walker, you know, where he plays. Barber's having their both prospects play a really good 200-foot game. So when you start going and critiquing each player, uh, there's not a lot of room to maneuver. Um, so it comes back to, uh, you know, a Thomas and a Verona, you know, they, uh, they've been alternating a little bit. You know, Thomas came in and scored a big goal the other night. And, uh, you know, Verona will get his opportunity at some point here. But he's going to have to play a 200-foot game uh, because if, you, if he's playing 16 minutes of hockey, you're not having the puck more than four minutes. So that means you got to get the puck back. And how do you do that? You play good defense, you win one-on-one -on -one battles. So those are the type of things what we're looking for as a coaching staff, regardless if you're a UFA, first rounder, seventh rounder. Uh, and that's how we're going to build the lineup and make them better. And uh, hopefully they'll make them, uh, the younger kids, uh, better when they, once they get to the NHL. With the lineup right now, I saw Ness was still non-contact. Are there is he any chance he's back for this series? I think there's a possibility Ness could be good for Saturday. I mean, it's it's a slow process. He went through it today. We'll get an evaluation this afternoon if he can crank it up tomorrow in practice. Uh, certainly, if he comes to uh, you know the coaching staff on Friday and says he's good to go, then he'll get back in the lineup Saturday night. But um, you know, we want to be a little bit cautious of this. I think that the rest in between the series is going to certainly help potentially get him back in for Saturday. Um, and then we'll just have to see you know as the week goes on with the Stevenson situation as well. You know, certainly love to have him back for game one, um, but then we'll know more towards, I, I would suspect we'll know about Stevenson and Ness probably around Friday. What's the reason bringing, bringing Piedmont back in? Just center ice depth. You know, we don't know the Caps are still in the playoffs. Uh, we, we don't know from game to game whether Stevenson's going to be back. Obviously, they sent, us back, sent him back for game four and five. Um, Pilon, real good skill, good speed, uh, and we just felt that with our center ice depth not being the way it can be, we bring him back in, get him up to speed, and uh, you know if Stevenson doesn't return for Saturday, maybe we throw him in there this weekend and see what he's got because uh, otherwise you're going to have to go with two natural centers um, and have Walker play, and then potentially you know maybe a Liam O'Brien who's got a little bit of experience back in junior, but. You know, I uh, prefer to leave Liam O'Brien on the wing, you know, because he's such an important physical and uh, player and the four check as well. So uh, we'll just see what transpires here over the next couple of days. Uh, and Joe Hansen, when he gets here, I mean, it, it's good to always bring in a first round pick, but with the depth you guys have right now on the back end, I'm guessing it's not going to see much more. Uh, you never know, you know, in the Nestor situation and, uh, you know, obviously uh, Williams was excellent the other night and, uh, you know, if Ness cannot play, we'll probably return to the same set of D that won the game five. But uh, Johansson's a left shot skill guy um, and he's going to be here next year uh, or potentially in Washington. So I think it's important that he comes in here, uh, much like all the young players uh, drafted, uh, get up to speed with Hershey, learn our systems. Um, and you just never know, right? Uh, so he's not coming in just as a, an extra. He's coming in as a potential guy that may be down the line. Uh, if there's injuries in Washington or Hershey, he could potentially play some games too. You get a kick out of guys going blonde this time of year. Uh, I, I seen the text last night on the uh, team uh, uh, text strand that uh, they were asked polling guys whether they wanted to dye some guys' hair blonde. But uh, you know, whatever it works. You know, this time of year, guys are always trying funky things, and um, it's not the first time I haven't seen Ryan Bork uh, dye his hair. So, uh, but it's not going to happen with me. That's for sure. What about Chris? Were you a little surprised with him? I was. I I, I figured Rick. Uh, Ryan Bork was going to get it done, but I uh, was a little surprised when it came in with uh, with uh, Chris for sure. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks Kurt. Thanks,